So this is the cure to insecurity, codependency, low self-esteem, ego neediness, unhappiness. It's self-love. So the question is, why don't you love yourself? I'm not talking about um, an egotistical type of love where, oh, you know, I get my nails done, I get my hair done. That's nice. But I'm talking about the you on the inside. Loving you. Because you know what? A lot of us love other people really well. We, we go out of our way for people. We take time for people. We, you would do anything for this person. You know, you would give anything for your job. You would give anything to your church, to um, your family. You, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night and talk to them. I mean, you would give your last. And then what happens is you get upset because you're not receiving that same love from them. So, so you're giving this love and then you're expecting them to love you back in that way, but they're not able to. No one will ever be able to give you the love that you can give you. So the question is, why are you giving it to you? What would happen if you went after loving yourself the way you go after loving them and whoever them is for you? What would happen? Because the time has come where you can no longer afford to neglect what happens when you invest in you. And I'm telling you, this, this may sound simple, but if we can really um, embody what I'm saying, this will change our lives. Because the you, the you on the inside has been waiting for this. And now some of you may be thinking, well, I actually don't really even love people that well. That's fine. Because as you begin to love yourself, as you begin to see the weakness in yourself, the brokenness in yourself, and give grace to yourself, be patient and kind to yourself, we're gonna get right into this. You'll inevitably be able to do that for other people. And so how do we, how do we begin to do this? How do we practice this? And, I, and I, I use the word practice because that's what it is. We're always going to be evolving in our ability um, in, in learning how to love. That's, that's why my, my book, I, I, I break down practical ways of of being able to love others and yourself in, in, in a 30-day span where you can practice one thing easily every day and get used to it. And so 1 Corinthians 13, it's a familiar passage of scripture. If you're a follower of Jesus, if you subscribe to the Bible, if you don't, they say it in weddings, they, you know, it's on cups, it's on plaques and things like that. And so it's usually attributed to another person. You know, loving, being patient with another person, being kind with another person. But what I want to do today is I want us to, to take this um, scripture and, and apply it to ourselves. Are you patient with you? Do you take time out for you, for your soul to be still? Do you take out time in meditation to be able to reflect, to see what's going on with you? Because, because whatever's happening around you, Whatever thing that keeps coming up, you're constantly anxious, you know, you're constantly depressed, you're constantly suicidal, you're constantly angry, whatever that looks like, is because of something going on on the inside. All right? So are you patient with you? Are you taking out time to evaluate what's happening here? Are you kind to yourself? How do you talk to yourself? You talk to yourself the way your mom used to talk to you, the way your dad, the way your spouse, the way your boss, the way your pastor. Are you kind to yourself? Jealous envy. If I'm constantly comparing myself to what somebody else has or who they are, coveting what they have, wishing I looked like them, sounded like them, wishing I was them, that's not loving me. Because who you are, nobody else can be that person. What you have, nobody else can bring that to the earth. And if you're constantly jealous and envious of another person, you're not loving you. You need to give you a chance to be loved. And if you take out time to see who you really are, you 
might like yourself. And then the need for other people to like you won't be as great. It won't have as much weight. Why? Because you like you. You enjoy you. Bragging and arrogant. The highest version of yourself has no need to brag. It doesn't need to, to be arrogant. The highest version of you is, is humble. It's, it's, it's meek. It doesn't have the need to, to make sure everybody knows how you got it and, and all of that. And the, the amazing thing about this is what will inevitably happen is that people will begin to brag and boast about you. Acting unbecomingly. When you love you, you don't act out. You don't allow somebody to pull you out of your character because you love yourself too much for your blood pressure to be going up. You love yourself too much to allow your peace of mind to be disturbed in that way. And so what do you do? You protect that. You love yourself too much to give your heart to somebody who does not deserve it. And so even, even this last one protects. Trust, hopes, perseveres. Are you protecting you? Or are you just treating yourself like trash? Like, like you don't have the value that you do have. But if you don't see your value first, nobody else will. So he said acting um, on becoming uh, seeks its own. The, the, the true you isn't selfish. It actually desires to give. It actually blesses you. It, it, it blesses your soul. It, it brings um, health and wholeness to you to be able to give. That, that even when you don't feel like it, to, to give to somebody who's less fortunate, to give to somebody who is struggling, even in an area that you're struggling with, you'll be amazed that... Uh, what will happen if you try to talk and encourage someone who is struggling with depression, even, even though you're feeling depressed? It's, it's amazing how that will uh, feed your soul, nourish your soul, and, that, and, and how that would, would, would help the real you to experience love on the inside, provoked ir irritable. Are you easily provoked and irritated with yourself? That one explains itself. Um, uh, uh, keeps accounts of wrong done to it or resentful. Are you allowing the, the mind-made self, are you allowing those thoughts um, of, of what happened to you, the mistakes you made, what that person did to you, um, how they made you feel, are you keeping an account of that and, and then expressing it? Oh, let me tell you what they did to me. Oh, let me tell you what happened. You know, um, yeah, my first marriage and then my second marriage too. Or, you know, oh yeah, my first church and my last church. Oh yeah, my last job and the job before that. Are you keeping an account? Because that's, that's not helping who you are. When you love yourself, you, you get that out. You forgive. You don't hold on to that resentment and that bitterness. Because the past is done. But, but something that's so beautiful is that if you take time to reflect, there is something there to, have, to be learned from each one of those experiences. And then you'll realize, well, maybe it wasn't so bad after all. Because, you know, it made me who I am today or, or, or what have you. Uh, rejoices in the wrong versus the, the truth. If you're loving you, you're not going to celebrate wrong things. You're not going to celebrate uh, wrong thoughts. You're not going to you're you're not going to entertain that stuff. You're you're going to rejoice in the truth. You because you want you want your soul to to be nourished, to to be whole, to be full. You don't want to feed it junk. You don't want to constantly, you know, uh, feed yourself this stuff that's, that's, not, that's not making you better on the inside. Thinks no evil. 
Do you even pay attention to what you think about all the time? What you, when you love yourself and those thoughts come that, that don't benefit you, that don't feed your soul, those thoughts of jealousy, envy, those thoughts uh, of arrogance, those, those thoughts that are, are evil, those thoughts that are wrong, those, those things uh, about that person or about you or whatever it is that is not feeding your highest self, your true self. Are you allowing yourself to think about it? Or are you casting that mess away? Because if you love yourself, you wouldn't allow those thoughts to have um, control over you. Because whatever you continue to think about, you become. That thought comes and then that feeling comes. You think about that and now you feel worthless. You think about that and now you, you don't feel good enough. You think about that and now you feel depressed. You think about that and now you feel suicidal. You feel anxious. You, you feel sad. You know, whatever that looks like for you. When you love yourself, you don't allow those thoughts to be there. You, you, you don't think on those things because you love yourself too much to do that. Uh, last week, we already we hit protects. Do you trust who you are, the real you on the inside? Do you trust that, that things are working out for the good? Do you trust that, 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 that the real you on the inside is desiring to um, accomplish the things that God has set you on this earth to accomplish? Do you trust that? Do you, do you have hope? Are you keeping hope alive on the inside? <laughs> because when you love yourself, you don't just give up. And that, that, that leads us right into perseveres. When you love you, you don't quit on you. You don't give up on you. You don't commit suicide. You don't kill yourself. You don't give in to... Um, depression you don't you don't let anxiety have a hold of you you don't poison yourself with drugs and and alcohol and, and these things that that damage the the outside of you where where the real you is dwelling when you love you you keep going you keep pressing forward you forget the stuff behind that's behind you, the past, those things that don't benefit you, and you strain with all you have. You, you, you press on. 